Hey there, welcome to this Koala Sampler tutorial episode. And as you can see today, we are diving into the exciting new update, which is version 1.4072. And I've got my little, you know, post here from Facebook. It would be great if this was a little bit more detailed. It's my only criticism of this update is that just when we get the information, some of it you're kind of having to decide for yourself. And of course, I'm making this video to try and help you guys out with it. But it would be kind of cool if there was a little bit more information in here. Anyway, let's dive into the good stuff. So multiple selection and modification. In a nutshell, that just means that previously before the update, all you do when you're messing about with your pads, say you want to apply some effects, do, you know, whatever it is, play with your tools, the pitch volume whatever you had to do it on a pad to pad basis now if let's say you've chopped a piece of audio to multiple pads and all of a sudden you want to you know pitch them all down a few semitones you would have to come in and do that again on a pad to pad basis you can obviously pitch it before you chop it but if you want that flexibility what we can do now is we can hold down edit here and you will notice the pads start to flash we can select all of those, even tells us how many we've selected, which is really cool. And now when we play around with the pitch or the volume, apply choke groups, even do stuff like bounce, you know, make mono, whatever it is, it does it to all of the samples at exactly the same time. So a real game changer there in terms of workflow and speed. That's going to be absolutely massive for a lot of people, myself included. Um, and if you want to come out of that mode, you can just click a pad and you're out of it. Now, the next thing to look at here is sequencing. So what we've got is sequence snapping and essentially it just makes it act like Ableton or machine. So if we go into the tempo menu, when I talk about things being a little bit vague, it tells us in this update the sequence snapping is here. It didn't tell you where it was, but it's in the tempo menu and it's down here. I'm going to turn it back off for a second just so that you can see it previously before the update. When you press play, and again, there'll be no audio, you can see it loops through your pattern, your sequence, whatever it is. And then when I click the next one, it's almost like an instantaneous jump. And what you found, you know, what I found personally was that was quite tricky when you wanted to make a track. So normally I hit record and say one, you know, sequence is my intro. I'm going to wait and wait, and then I need to get the timing just oh, 100%, you know, try and get that timing spot on in order to get my sequences laid out and build my track. With the new feature now, with this snapping, we can actually turn it on, and sequence end is an easy one to show. But if we now do the same thing, and you can see the little playhead marker again, it acts in exactly the same way. However, when I go to this one, you will notice it flashed and it waited. And once that sequence ended, it skipped over to the next one. So now we have this safety net and this way to kind of control our sequences and our patterns when we're like making our tracks. So that's really, really powerful. And again, go into the tempo menu if you want these settings. You can set it by the beat or by the bar. And of course, that's going to depend on your, you know, your bar length inside of your sequence. But there's a bunch of different options to play around with there, and it's going to make it's going to make creating tracks just an absolute joy. So super happy about that one. Let's take a look at the rest of the list. Adjusted UI layout to accommodate newer iPhones. Obviously, there must have been an issue with the user interface, so that's been updated. Added some MIDI mapping is another one that's a little bit vague here. If you go into settings and then to map MIDI. I'm familiar with Koala, however, do I remember exactly which one of these things that you could MIDI map before? Not really, so it would be kind of useful if that was kind of listed in more detail. I've got a feeling maybe this piano editor is new that you can MIDI map. Maybe the choke group here I noticed. I'm not 100% sure on those. Hold also was another one that I just I can't remember pre-update what you could do with it. Anyway. If anyone knows an exact list of those, please, you know, put them in the YouTube comments and then we can kind of all learn from that. But it would be useful when these updates come out if we could just go into like a tiny little bit more detail uh, just so that we all know exactly what we're getting. But, you know, whatever it is that's been added, super cool. Really appreciate it, of course. Um, but yeah, I just kind of would like a bit more of a breakdown. Um, what else do we have? Fix the bug where if you leave Koala open for more than 13 hours, it makes a weird noise. That's brilliant. I've never left Koala open for more than 13 hours, so I have no idea about that. But apparently, uh, yeah, it doesn't make a weird noise anymore. 
and then the AUV3 plugin is now free. So that used to be a little, you know, kind of paid add-on, which wasn't expensive anyway. But the fact that he's now giving it away free is like super cool. And it essentially just allows you to use Koala inside other applications like Orm and stuff like that, because you can use it as like an AUV3 plugin. Um, so yeah, all in all, a massive update, really. Um, they seem like two very simple features, but actually in terms of workflow, and just being, you know, making Koala even more usable than it already is. I think they're absolutely amazing. So really excited about them. Hope you guys are too. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Take care.